Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to unit eight of uh, our course Law of Accounting. Uh, today we are here to explore the relationship between law and accounting in the world uh, of business. Law serves as a backbone upon which commercial practices built and regulated. Uh, from contractual agreement to financial transactions, every aspect of business activity uh, is governed by a complex framework of legal principles and regulations. So, and within the field of accounting and intersections between law and practice is particularly uh, pronounced. So, my name is Yasser Golfraz. I'm your tutor for uh, uh, today's session. Uh, if there is any issue, concerns, or uh, questions, please uh, uh, raise your uh, voice or so, uh, raise your hand and uh, I'll get back to you. So uh, today topic is understand the elements of a law affecting uh, commercial practice. So before I start, anyone, everybody, uh, if anyone is there, can you see my screen and can you hear my voice? Okay. So the aim of the module is to uh, develop a comprehensive understanding of how English law influences and uh, shapes both uh, businesses, organizations, and uh, professional accountancy practice throughout our uh, you know, exploration. Uh, we will discuss the various elements of law and directly impact the day-to-day uh, -day operations of business and uh, the ethical responsibilities of accounting uh, profession. Uh, indicative contract, contract laws, element of valid contract, how contracts may be terminated, remedies of breach of contract, uh, relevant case laws, law of agency, principle of agency, rights, duties of agents, implications of the agency relationships, uh, relevant case laws, uh, law of tort, uh, what constitutes uh, liability for negligence, negligence, and miss uh, 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 miss um, miss statement uh, various li uh, vicarious liability remedies for claim of negligence uh, and then again uh, relevant uh, case laws so the first thing is uh, types of law public law private or civil law so Law as a concept is often categorized in two uh, broad categories, public and private law. So public law primarily concerns the relationships uh, between individuals and the government or state. So the, it includes various uh, branches such as uh, constitutional uh, administrative law, uh, this branch deals with the fundamental principles and rules that govern a nation, including the organization uh, and power of the government and the right and duties of citizen. Then uh, administrative uh, law focuses on the legal principles governing the action and decisions of administrative uh, agencies and officials ensuring they act within their uh, legal authority. Uh, next is uh, criminal law. Criminal law involves the uh, prosecution by the state of individuals or entities for uh, committing acts deemed harmful to society. It establishes uh, the penalties for such uh, offenses. Uh, then another branch is private or civil law. Uh, things comes under uh, private or civil law, uh, contract, tort, property, trust, and, uh, uh, you know, family. Uh, so contract law governs agreement between parties ensuring promises made are enforceable by law. Uh, it involves elements such as offer, acceptance, consideration, and intention to create legal relations. Uh, then tort law addresses civil wrongs or injuries caused by individuals or their property due to the uh, actions or negligence uh, of others. Example includes negligence, defamination, and uh, trespass. Uh, 
uh, property law, this branch governs the ownership, use, and transfer of property, both real land and building, and personal movable uh, items. Uh, trust law deals with the creation and administration of trusts, which are legal agreements, uh, where a trustee holds assets for the benefit uh, of beneficiaries. Family law uh, encompasses uh, legal matters uh, relating to marriage, divorce, child custody, adoptions, and other uh, you know uh, family uh, uh, family relationships. Understanding these distinctions helps individuals navigate the legal landscape and comprehend their uh, right and obligations within the society. Any questions if anyone is there? Okay, uh, key terminology, uh, what is contract uh, law? So if there is anyone can explain if anyone is there. So in the study, in the study of law, the essential to group key terminology, particularly concerning contracts, which are fundamental legal instruments governing agreement between parties. Uh, what is contract? Contract in its essence uh, is a legal binding promise. It entails an agreement between two or more parties where one party makes an offer and author, uh, another accepts. So the agreement may involve undertaking certain actions or re uh, refraining from doing so. For a contract to be valid, it must fulfill several elements. So there are uh, the seven essential elements of a contract are the offer, acceptance, meeting of the minds, consideration, capacity, legality, and sometimes a uh, written uh, documents. So contracts are, you know, uh, very important in daily life and cover various areas. Uh, including employment, leasing, insurance, and financial transactions. Understanding contract law is essential uh, for individuals and businesses to ensure their rights and obligations are protected. So contract law... Uh, uh, forms the uh, backbone of commercial and uh, personal transactions, providing a framework for parties to create and enforce agreement. So uh, if you look at here, the key components and principle of contract laws uh, offer agreement uh, acceptance, uh, then uh, consideration uh, refers to some thing of value exchange between parties to contract typically uh, you know money goods or services so it distinguish uh, a contract uh, from a gift and in necessary uh, for its enforceability so intention to create legal relations uh, this means they understand that their agreement will have legal consequences and be enforceable by law uh, then terms uh, terms of contract outline the rights and obligation of the parties. They can be expressed explicitly stated or uh, implied uh, in, in, in uh, you know, uh, inferred from the uh, circumstances or uh, law. So type can be exclusion uh, clauses, common law rules, statutory uh, rules, unfair contract terms, Act 1979, and then uh, unfair terms in consumer contract regulations, 1999. So exclusion clauses, uh, these are uh, contractual terms and seek to limit or exclude liability for certain types of laws or damage, they must be reasonable and are brought to the 
uh, attention of the uh, other party to be enforceable. Common law rules are developed uh, uh, through judicial decisions, govern contract formation, interpretation, and enforcement in the absence of specific statutory provisions. Then statutory uh, rules in addition to common law contract law is also influenced by statutory enacted by legislations which may prescribe uh, certain requirement of regulations or contracts in specific contexts. So as you can see here, Unfair Contract Terms Act 1977 and then 1999. So 77, this legislation aims to protect consumers and small businesses from unfair uh, contract terms that create a significant imbalance in the uh, party's rights and obligations. Uh, when we talk about uh, uh, unfair terms in consumer contract regulations 1999, uh, these regulations further supplement consumers' protection uh, by prohibiting uh, unfair terms in contracts between businesses and consumers breach. So breach, if you go here, breach, uh, damages and other remedies. A breach occur when one party uh, fails to fulfill its uh, obligations under the uh, contract either by not performing as promised or performing inadequately damages or inadequately. So damages are the uh, monetary compensation awarded in the innocent party to the uh, losses suffered due to the uh, other party breach of contract. Uh, it aims to put the injury party, injured party in the position they would have been uh, in had uh, in had the contract been fulfilled. Then uh, other remedies in addition to damages, other remedies for breach in contract may include specific performance, compelling the uh, breaching party to fulfill their obligations, recessions, conciliation of the contract or in just uh, in injections court order uh, restraining uh, certain actions. So understanding these aspects of contract law is important for individuals and businesses alike to navigate contractual relationships effectively and protect their interests in uh, legal transactions. Right, who's there? Hello. Hi, Nelson. Yeah, hi. I was finding it difficult to join. As, uh, yeah, because I, I think um, you were asking me to download the latest version of Zoom. So, I, I mean, I got Zoom on my phone, on my laptop, but was asking me to download the latest version. That's why I joined late. But that's yeah. fine. No problem. Uh, uh, Nelson, you will get a uh, recorded session uh, by, I think, so Monday or Tuesday. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. So uh, uh, I'm just, uh, just quickly, if you can tell me a bit about yourself. Uh, are you practicing accountant? Uh, yes, I am. I am a practicing accountant. I have a small accounting firm that I run. I got close to 100 clients. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm being supervised by HMRC. Uh, I think, um, but I want to be supervised and be a member of a professional body. That's why I took up uh, this course. Okay. Yeah, I have a master's in accounting and finance. Good. good. Um, yeah, but I want I want that professional uh, support, professional accountancy body. To, to be um to join them that's why I'm I've taken all this course I got four modules to complete I got exemption from from most of the modules because of my masters so so yeah so so that's that's about me okay that's good so currently you are uh, not doing any private uh, practice yes I said I'm practicing I'm a practicing accountant I run a small accounting firm called Budget Accounting Services Limited. Um, I'm being supervised by HMRC, as I said to you earlier. 
I have close to 100 clients. A small company is run by just, just I alone. Yeah. Okay, so you are based on UK. I'm in the UK, yeah. I'm in, a, I'm in England, to be specific. I'm in England, yeah. Okay, and uh, are you a member of any other uh, body uh, for practicing reason, or you're just practicing? Uh, I don't. I'm, I'm not, it's not. I'm not a, country, but no, it's not right. I'm not a member of any accountancy body. Mm -hmm. That's the main reason for which I've applied to RFA. Okay. okay. To to do to complete these modules and be a member and get a practicing certificate. But I'm allowed to practice. I'm being, as I said to you, I'm I'm supervised by HMRC. HMRC is the tax the tax body in the UK. So I'm supervised by them. Which but one I is sorry? M sorry? Which one are you are you talking about? HMRC or MMR? What did you say? It's, HMRC is not an accountancy body, it's the tax uh it's a government institution that um manages taxation in the country. Okay, M, what did you say? Sorry, to can you? HMRC, HM Cost. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, you mean a tax office, basically? Yeah, HM the tax office, office, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 that's correct. That's correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, anyway, good luck for uh, you, and hopefully, you will get a full membership uh, for IFA. And yeah. uh, you will be a professional financial accounting uh, here in UK and uh, Australia as well. Okay. Okay, you know that that's, that's get, great. You know that you will get a two memberships. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, you will get a membership of, uh, you will be eligible for uh, IFA, Institute of Financial Accountants of England. And then also you can apply for, uh, you don't need to apply. You will automatically get, uh, will get a, a membership for Institute of uh, Professional Accountants of uh, uh, Australia. Okay. Oh, oh that's good. That's good. Okay. That's good. So yeah, uh, we'll carry on. I'm just here. Uh, uh, I've just started, you know, contract law. Uh, I just uh, talking about contract law. Yeah. So uh, trade uh, descriptions Act 1968. Uh, trade uh, descriptions Act 1968 was enacted to prevent businesses and uh, sales uh, people from de deceiving consumers through false or misleading information about their products or services. So this legislation aims to promote honesty and uh, transparency in commercial transactions under the Act. It becomes an offense for businesses to sell goods or services based on misinformation uh, deliberately. So instead, they were uh, required to provide accurate and truthful descriptions of their offering to avoid misleading consumers into making purchases uh, based on false claims. Uh, they, this act played an important role in protecting consumer rights and ensuring fair uh, practices in the marketplace, okay? Uh, then uh, here we will talking about unfair contract terms act uh, and uh, unfair terms in consumer contract regulations uh, 1999. Uh, uh, the unfair terms in consumer contracts regulations 1999 were introduced to safeguard consumer from unfair contract terms that can, could uh, uh, disadvantage them in uh, commercial transactions. Uh, these regulations uh, steamed from the EU, uh, you know, European un Fair Consumer Contract Terms uh, are Directive 19.3-13 and EEC and uh, uh, were implemented into UK domestic law. They aim to replace earlier uh, uh, versions of similar regulations and overlap. So considerably with the Unfair Contract Terms Act 1977. Uh, uh, examples of uh, 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 unfair contract terms. When we talk about examples of unfair uh, contract terms, uh, these are include provisions that allows traders in unliterally uh, changes goods or services characteristics without a valid reason retain an unreasonable amount of uh, compensation if consumers fail to fulfill their obligations or attempt 
to strip consumers uh, of their legal rights. So uh, these regulations were uh, instrumental in uh, ensuring fairness and equity in consumer contracts, protecting individuals, forms, exploitation, ex uh, exploitative or, or oppressive, uh, op op oppressive terms imposed by uh, uh, businesses. Okay. So you're doing company formation or anything like that? Okay, so analyze the elements and nature of contractual uh, agreement. Contract law is a vital aspect of the law of obligations, which forms part of civil law contracts or voluntarily a voluntary agreement uh, entered into by one or more parties or legal entities with the intention of creating legally uh, binding obligations. Uh, these obligations can be enforced if necessary, providing parties with uh, protection against breaches or failures uh, to perform contractual duties. Uh, for example, one party may provide substandard goods or services while another may fail to fulfill payment obligations. Uh, contractual agreement serves to regulate and uh, facilitate business transactions, ensuring parties uphold their commitments and resolving disputes in a formal manner. Uh, law of contract. Uh, can you see my screen and can you hear my voice clearly, uh, Nelson? Yes, I'm seeing your screen. I'm hearing you clearly, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, <clears throat> Law of contract. Uh, law of contract has evolved over time through uh, judicial decisions to regulations, business practices, and minimize uh, conflicts in commercial uh, dealing. It uh, comprise, uh, compri comprises several components essential for undertaking uh, contractual relationships, uh, uh, like formation, uh, privacy of uh, contract, uh, constitutionals, mitigations, factors, discharge of obligations, and then uh, remedies. So, uh, obviously, formation, how is contract formed? How does an individual create a legally binding agreement between with another and what may prevent or agreement, uh, you know, operating as a contract? Uh, then, privacy of contract, exactly who are contractual obligations owned? Uh, then, uh, const uh, sorry, uh, construction, contract constructions entails determining the nature and extent of obligations, including in the contract. Uh, it involves uh, interpreting the terms and conditions agreed upon by the parties to ascertain their uh, uh, intended meanings and implications. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, impl implications, uh, then mitigations uh, factors, uh, then mitigations factors, uh, when mitigate a contract be void or uh, voidable, so uh, discharge of obligations, uh, at what point are the parties free from their uh, contractual uh, obligations? Uh, then uh, remedies, uh, contractual remedies refer to the available, uh, you know, courses of action for parties in the event of a, a breach or failure to perform contractual obligations. Remedies may include uh, uh, damages, specific performance, recessions, or injustice aimed uh, at uh, compensation that injured party or enforcing contractual uh, rights. Uh, here, uh, the video, uh, you might can hear if, uh, uh, you know, I just quickly play that. Okay, no problem. Give you my number one tip to get over. Uh, can you hear uh, Nelson? Going to therapy. Going to therapy helped me so, so much. Yes, I'm hearing it, yeah. Help yeah. Okay. But this... uh, yeah. Just quickly, uh, definition by Harvard. 
Contracts are everywhere, not just some huge formal agreement between large corporations where one is going to buy the other, so on. Well, that's what something like that looks like. But, you know, as a matter of fact, it's everywhere. You go through them, I don't know how many times in the course of a day. Uh, you go into a parking garage, they give you a stump. Now, that's a contract. They're going to look after your car, more or less, and you're going to pay them. You walk in to your dry cleaners and you drop off your suit and the person behind the desk gives you a receipt. Well, that's important because that's how they're going to know which suit is yours. But that receipt is also a contract. And even if there wasn't a receipt, you're dropping it off there and coming back a couple of days later and picking up the suit, well, they expect to get paid and you expect to pay them. That's a contract. You walk into a restaurant, you order the steak and chips and everything else, and then you get the check and you pay it. You can't just say, well, that's very nice. Thank you very much for dinner. Uh, see you tomorrow understood between you was they're going to feed you and you're going to pay them. And so it goes. But it gets even less formal than that. Uh, I live uh, in New England and we have a lot of snowstorms in the winter. So what happens? Uh, it snows and a bunch of local kids come knock on your door and uh, say, uh, Sir, can we shovel out your driveway and your walkway and so on? How much? 20 bucks. Okay. So they do it and then they knock on the door and they have a contract with you. You owe them $20. They didn't do that as a favor. Uh, now it gets more complicated. Uh, you're out of town and it snows. And while you're out of town, they come and they shovel out your driveway and do all that. And when you come back and they say, $20, please. Well, do you have a contract for that or not? We'll find out later whether you do or not. And what if it snows the way it did a couple of years ago, uh, 18 inches? And they say, well, you know, uh, we had a lot of work to do, and they really did. Uh, this time, you owe us $30. Uh, do you owe them $30? All that is something we're going to try to understand. Now, you might ask, why do we have a MOOC on this? Why am I asking you to join me for really quite a number of sessions and quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of work, your work, my work, uh, on the subject of contracts. One thing I'm going to tell you: I'm not going to turn you into lawyers. I'm not going to teach you how to draft a contract or deal with a situation where somebody sues you or claims. It's not what I'm going to do. Uh, what I'm going to do is for you to understand what's going on as you go through your lives in a jungle, or maybe not a jungle, a forest. It's not so unfriendly of contracts. It's as if I were offering to teach you a course on the internal combustion engine. Now, this wouldn't be a course on how to fix your car when it breaks down or doesn't break down, but to know what's going on under the hood. So if your service station then tells you it's the transmission and that's going to go, going to cost you 1500 bucks, uh, you know what the transmission is and you know whether it kind of makes sense for that to cost you $1,500. In other words, what I'd like to do when you're through with this is for you to understand 
this part of your environment. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Nelson. Okay. Hello. Yes. Yeah. So I'm here. I'm here. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Your basically contract is a legal binding between uh binding agreement between two or more parties uh, that entails mutual obligations. It it is formed when a one party makes an offer and another party accepts that offer so thereby creating a meeting uh, of the uh, minds or mutual understanding uh, regarding certain rights and duties so the essence of a contract uh, lies in the party's intentions to create legal obligations which distinguish uh, distinguishes it from mere agreements so contracts can cover a wide range of transactions and relationships including a uh, sale leases employment and services to understand more about contracts uh, you know that uh, i just uh, uh, showed the video as well yeah so what is contract law and what does it aims to uh, do contract law serves as a legal framework governing uh, what do you think contract must be in writing or it can be verbal as well Yes, contract can be verbal as well. Like for instance, you can yes. show the video, and then somebody somebody walk into the restaurant and then order for a food. And then he has to once he's been served that food, he has to pay. That's a form of contract because you order the food, the restaurant will not give you the food. That's a contract. So you cannot walk out after you've eaten the food to say, oh. I'm not paying, then you breach the contract. So a contract can be verbal as well. Yeah, spot on. Well done, uh, uh, Nelson. Contract can be uh, verbal or in writing, okay? So uh, yes. contract law serves as a legal framework governing the formation, interpretation, and enforcement of uh, contracts. Its primary aim to be facilitate commercial uh, transactions by providing party with uh, certainty and uh, protections. Uh, contract law. Contract law generally upholds the principle of contractual freedom, uh, wherein parties are bound to by the agreements they willingly enter into. Uh, there are in, in instances where the courts uh, intervene, particularly in cases of abuse of bargaining powers, or unfair contract terms. Overall, uh, contract law seeks to uh, maintain fairness and justice in contractual uh, 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 relationships, ensuring parties fulfill their uh, obligations and resolves uh, disputes effectively. Uh, agreement in law. Agreement law refers to the uh, uh, any comments by you, uh, uh, Nelson. What, what do you think about agreement? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, agreement is is very very important in terms of um, in, in receiving a contract. In re because um, agreement between two people or group of people. It's why you look at to develop a contract or to reach to go into a contract. So agreement is very, very important in law. Yes, uh, spot on, well done. Agreement in uh, law refers to the mutual understanding or uh, meeting of minds between two or more parties regarding their rights and obligations. Uh, it involves, uh, 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 you know, uh, arrangement concerning past or future performances. Uh, while an agreement may exist between parties, it does not necessarily uh, create a legal obligation, uh, obligation enforceable in court. Uh, but when the agreement meets the specific requirements of a contract, such as offer, acceptance, consideration, and intention to create legal relations, it becomes legally binding and enforceable. Therefore, while all contracts uh, begin while the uh, 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 while an agreement, not all agreements qualify as contracts under the uh, law.
So example of standard form contracts can include uh, standard form contracts are pre-drafted uh, agreement, uh, you know, uh, containing standardized terms and conditions uh, typically used in commercial transactions. Uh, examples include uh, uh, contracts for banking, uh, uh, insurance, telecommunications, uh, and uh, software uh, licenses. So these contracts are often, uh, you know, uh, presented on a take it or leave it basis with little uh, room for uh, negotiations. So uh, there are uh, regarding types of uh, agreement uh, in uh, un, uh, unliteral contract, uh, uh, unliteral and bilateral contracts, a uh, one party promise to party or perform a certain act uh, after the uh, occurrence of a specified event or act by the other party. An example is an insurance policy where the insurance promises to pay compensation upon the uh, uh, in case of a specific event. Bilateral uh, agreement. Uh, bilateral uh, agreements involves mutual promises exchanged between two parties, each assuming uh, assuming an uh, an obligations under the contract. It differs from a unliteral agreement where only one party assumes an obligations. Bilateral agreements are common in various contexts, including. Uh, 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 international trade agreement where parties agree to uh, uh, reciprocal obligations to maintain trade relation. So understanding these uh, distinctions in important, uh, is important for comprehending the different type of agreements and contracts uh, encountered in various legal contexts and uh, commercial transactions. Uh, just uh, give me a second, uh, uh, Nelson. Just okay, no problem. Yes, uh, sorry, uh, Nelson. So agreement, uh, can you hear me? Can you see my screen, voice, everything is okay? Yes, yes, I'm hearing you. Okay, so agreement uh, refers to an arrangement, typically uh, informal between two or more parties uh, that may not uh, be legally enforceable. It is a validity is based on mutual acceptance by all parties involved and does not necessarily uh, require a written form, uh, but for an agreement to be legally binding, it must uh, uh, meet the essential elements of a contract. Uh, contract on the uh, you know, other hand is a formal arrangement between two or more parties that is enforceable by a uh, law. Uh, 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 it entails mutual acceptance by all parties and may require specific elements such as considerations uh, while some contracts needs to be in writing may can be oral uh, unless they involve certain matters like and or arrangement uh, then not uh, that cannot be completed uh, within a year so a contract is legally binding uh, and its terms can be enforced in a court of uh, law so then uh, on uh, uh, a unilateral, sorry, unilateral and bilateral contracts. Uh, 
uh, unilateral contracts, uh, only one party is ob obligated to honor that uh, uh, agreement rewards or obligations may be uh, contingent upon the performance of a specified act by the uh, promiser. Uh, unilateral contracts may lay strict time frames and the contract becomes active upon the uh, promiser performance of the uh, specified act. Uh, then we talk about bilateral uh, 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 contract. A bilateral contract involves two parties who are both legally uh, accountable to honor the agreement. Uh, there are no rewards in bilateral contracts, but parties may agree to uh, uh, prepayments upon signing. Uh, bilateral contracts typically have agreed upon deadlines uh, and the contract becomes active upon signing by uh, 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 both parties. Uh, so understanding these distinctions helps individuals and businesses navigate their agreements effectively ensuring clarity and enforceability in their uh, contractual uh, relationship. So here, uh, you know, uh, components of contract law, basically, uh, you can see uh, offer, agreement, acceptance, consideration, uh, intention to create legal relationships, uh, 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 that's uh, uh, mean uh, uh, parties must have the intention to create legal relationship uh, for a contract to be enforceable. Uh, commercial agreements typically presume this intention while domestic agreement may not. Uh, then terms, type, exclusion clauses, uh, common law rules and statutory uh, rules. I just discussed uh, initially explain initially uh, uh, in my uh, 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 first two, three pages, uh, terms of a contract uh, outline the rights and obligations of the parties, including conditions, warranties, and uh, uh, in nominate terms. Uh, exclusion clauses seek to limit or exclude liability for certain types of losses or damages uh, subject to common law and statutory rules such as uh, uh, you know, uh, UCTA uh, 1970, uh, 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 77 and uh, 1998 laws. Uh, same other remedies, uh, uh, breach as well. Uh, when we talk about uh, uh, here, breach. Uh, breach occurs when a party fails to fulfill its contractual obligations, either actually or anticipatory, so leading to remedies such as damages. Uh, so other remedies in addition to damage, other remedies for breach of contract may include specific performance uh, injunctions or equitable remedies. Uh, so understanding these components of contract law is essential for uh, individuals and businesses to navigate contractual relationship effectively and ensure uh, compliance with legal uh, 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 requirements. Agency, explain the principle of agency and their impact of business practices. So the law of agency is an area of commercial law dealing with a set of contractual, quasi-contractual and non-contractual uh, fiduciary uh, relationship that involves a person called the agent. So that is authorized to act on behalf of another to create legal relationship with the third party. So basically, uh, law of agency deals with the relationships where one person called the agent is authorized to act uh, on behalf of another person. So the person to create legal relationship with the third party, agency theory, a part of corporate governance addresses issues uh, are related to directors controlling a company while shareholders own it. Uh, the theory explores the potential problems of directors not acting in the best uh, interests of shareholders or stakeholders. Uh, understanding agency principle is important for businesses to establish effective relationships and ensure proper governance structures uh, 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 preventing conflicts of interests 
uh, and promoting accountability and transparency in business practices. Uh, a number of key terms and concepts are essential for understanding agencies, uh, agency, agency costs. Uh, so uh, agency uh, uh, theory, agent. So uh, agent is an individual employed by a principal to carry out tasks uh, on their behalf. The agent acts as a representative of the uh, principal in various matters. Uh, agency refers to the relationship established between a principal and their agent. It uh, 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 responsible and obligations of both parties in the uh, contractual arrangement. So agency costs are uh, incurred by prin uh, principals in monitoring the behavior of agents uh, due to a lack of interest in agreement, good faith. So these costs arise from efforts to ensure that agents act in the uh, uh, best interests of the uh, 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 of the principals. Uh, accountable accountability uh, when an agent agrees to undertake tasks on behalf of principals, uh, they become accountable to uh, that principal. So this accountability entails fulfilling duties and obligations as outlined in the agency agreements. So these terms is important for comprehending uh, the dynamics and challenges uh, in, uh, you know, inherent in the uh, principal agent relationships within the agency uh, uh, theory. Right, so separation of ownership and uh, control. The separation of ownership and control is a central aspect of agency theory, particularly concerning uh, corporate governance. So shareholders and uh, directors uh, here. So uh, shareholders as principals delegate control of the company uh, to professional managers or directors acting as agents to turn uh, to run the businesses on their behalf. Uh, fiduciary responsibility directors own a fiduciary uh, responsibility to shareholders operating in the uh, best interest of the shareholders as outlined in company law. Then passive roles of shareholders. Shareholders typically play a passive role in the uh, company's day-to-day -day, uh, management, relying on directors to make decisions aligned with their interests. Conflict of interest, the uh, separation uh, of ownership and control can uh, lead to conflict of interests between directors and shareholders agents objectives such as high salaries or sorry salaries and uh, bonuses may differ from principles objectives of wealth maximization uh, agency theory and uh, corporate governance uh, agency theory provides insight into the action of uh, various stakeholders in the corporate governance uh, framework Uh, historical perspective, uh, historically companies were owned and managed by the same individuals, uh, but the need for increased finance for corporate expansion led to uh, the separation of ownership and control. A limited liability and stock market, limited liability and uh, the development of stock markets facilitate, uh, facilitated the uh, delegation of running companies to managers or agency or agents a uh, separation of goals the separation of goals between wealth uh, maximization for shareholders and of agency theory so agency problems uh, agency problems the uh, you know is divorce between owners and uh, you know ownership and control uh, coupled with the uh, differing objectives gives rise to agency problems, including potential conflicts of interest and short-term perspectives of managers. Principal agents, uh, uh, agent relationship. 
So the separation of ownership and control a businesses can uh, lead to conflict of interest between shareholders, uh, principals and directors agents. So this conflict gave a rise to the principal agent, uh, a problem, a central focus of co corporate governance. Uh, shareholders must ensures uh, ensures uh, 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 that uh, uh, you know uh, focus of, uh, shareholders must ensure that directors act in their uh, best interests uh, caused by dominant or overbearing uh, directors there has been active uh, debate about the power of power of board of directors uh, various reports and legislations in the UK and the US aim to improve stakeholders control over company directors uh, emphasizing uh, the importance of accountability and transparency in corporate uh, governance. Uh, prominent businesses standards uh, revealed between 1998 and uh, 1992. Uh, during the period between 1998-19 and 2008, numerous prominent businesses uh, scandals emerged uh, uh, sorry prominent business scandals so uh, scandals emerged involving uh, overt and convert accounting uh, violations so the violation includes improved uh, uh, revenue recognition inflation of earnings and uh, deceptive accounting practices companies such as enron uh, worldcom and tyco international were Im embroiled uh, in scandals ranging from uh, uh, fraudulent financial uh, reporting to uh, hiding debt through off-balance sheet irregularities. So these scandals not only uh, constituted uh, ethical violations, but also led to legal sanctions for some firms. So the aftermath of these scandals promoted increased scrutiny of corporate governance practices and regulatory reforms to enhance transparency and accountability in the uh, business world. Uh, law of tort and remedies available. So, uh, any idea about law of tort? Any comments? Law, law of Oh, yeah, um, it's not strange, law of thought. Um, mm. Yeah, a, it's a civil wrong that breaches a legal duty or, uh, you know, infringes upon a legal rights, giving rise to a claim. Okay. For, yeah, claim for damages. So unlike contracts, a tort does not require a pre-existing relationships between parties for a claim to be successful. For example, uh, in a person injury claim resulting from a road accident, uh, the parties may have had no uh, you know, prior interactions. Uh, however, if a contract exists and a tort is committed, the uh, claimant can choose the most appropriate remedy. So understanding the law of tort is important for individuals and businesses to seek uh, 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 redress for civil wrongs and obtain remedies such as compensation for uh, damage uh, incurred. Okay. Okay. And there are two parties, limited limit limitation periods, the main elements of uh, uh, a tort. So uh, basically, in tort law, damages awarded aim to restore the uh, claimant to the position they would have been in if the uh, uh, tortious act had never occurred. So the limitation period for bringing a claim in tort is generally uh, six years, but for personal injury cases, it is uh, 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 three years. Uh, to succeed in a tort action, certain conditions must be met uh, the defendant must have committed an act or omission directly causing loss to the claimant, uh, resulting in legal liability established by the courts 
Additionally, the loss suffered must not be too remote, meaning it must be a direct consequences of uh, the defendant's actions or inactions. Uh, key aspects of tort law include the tort of negligence, various defenses, negligence by professionals, and the tort of uh, passing off. So, tort of uh, no sense uh, encompasses acts that interfere uh, with the persons use the enjoyment of their land uh, uh, dividend into private and public uh, in a sense. Uh, private uh, in a sense protects uh, land over rights to uh, uh, rights to reasonable comfort uh, and convenience. So while public uh, in a sense involves harm of the local community as a whole, examples include pollution, air keeping, uh, diseased animals. So trespass to land occurs when someone enters or place objects on another land without permission, uh, actionable, uh, without proof of uh, damage. Uh, trespass to a uh, person. Trespass to person include uh, assault, uh, you know, uh, battery and false imprisonment. Uh, uh, battery involves in international and a harmful or offensive contact with a person, while assault uh, creates a reasonable fear of uh, immediate battery without actual con contacts. So false imprisonment occurs when someone is, is unlawfully detained. Negligence involves breaching a duty of care resulting in harm to another. So to succeed in a negligence claim, the claimant must prove that the uh, defendant owed by them a duty of care, breached that duty, uh, they caused them damage or lost thought uh, that breach. So duty of care requires taking reasonable uh, you know, precautions to prevent foreseeable harms to another. So understanding the these elements is important for uh, uh, navigating tort law and seeking address for uh, uh, civil uh, wrong. Uh, neighbor principles, uh, landmark case of uh, Donoghue versus, uh, you know, uh, uh, Stevenson. So establish the neighbor principles, you know, uh, indicating that a duty of care may exist uh, uh, even without a contractual relationship. So the principle altered the uh, notion that only parties to contract could sue or be sued as uh, per the uh, doctrine of privacy. Uh, so uh, Lord Atkin defined the duty of care as taking a reasonable uh, precaution to avoid acts or omissions that could uh, foreseeably harm one's neighbor defined as those are directly affected by one's action. So the case involved Mrs. Donoghue of uh, finding a decomposed snail in a bottle of ginger beer uh, leading to physical illness. So the court ruled uh, that manufacturer owes a duty of care to consumes to prevent injury, uh, expanding the duty beyond physical harm. So then another case of uh, assess the validity of given contracts uh, of felt house versus uh, uh, Bendley 1863 assessment of contracts. In this case, the claimants offer to buy a horse was not binding because acceptance was not communicated explicitly. So despite the uh, nephew's uh, intent to sell the horse, he did not communicate this intentions to the claimant to or take an action to be, uh, bind himself. So the case underscore the principles that acceptance must be clearly communicated to uh, form a binding agreements. Uh, additionally, the post rules and exceptions to the communications requirement uh, deems acceptable uh, complete upon posting even if the offer has not uh, received. So another case laws, 18, uh, 18 Adams versus Lentzels, uh, the defendants offered to sell wool 
uh, to the claimants via mail requires a response by uh, post. So due to postal delay, the claimant acceptance arrived late. The court held that the contract was formed upon posting uh, the acceptance applying the poster rules. This rule dictates that acceptance is complete upon posting. So regardless of when it is received by the offerer, uh, providing the letter is uh, properly stamped, addressed and posted. So this case illustrates the uh, significance of timely communications and the application of the uh, postal rule in uh, uh, contract uh, uh, formation. So shareholders evaluate the implication of an agency relationships for the principals and agents, shareholders and auditors. Uh, in corporate governance, the relationship between a company and its auditor uh, uh, mirrors the principal agent, agent dynamics. Auditors acting as agent to shareholders conduct independent review of the company's financial statement uh, but similar to uh, directors, auditors have their own interests to consider. Uh, maintaining auditor uh, independence from the uh, board of directors is important for uh, shareholders, although this can be uh, challenging given the close working relationship between auditors and directors. So shareholders often question the independence of uh, auditors. Okay. So leading to the in, in introduction of uh, stricter controls and standards to safeguard their interests. Uh, cost of agency relationship. Agency cost uh, stem primarily uh, from principles uh, monitoring agents activities and can um, manifest in various forms such as monetary expansion, expenses, resource consumptions, or time investment in monitoring. Uh, so example includes in, uh, incentive schemes for directors, cost associated with providing annual report, report data, expenses related to uh, meeting with financial uh, analysis, analysts, and the cost of monitoring uh, behavior. So these costs uh, are borne by principals are in, indirectly incurred as agents allocate time and uh, resources to certain activities. Uh, residual uh, loss and additional uh, type of agency cost arise when uh, uh, directions uh, indulge an excessive perks beyond their uh, remunerations package. So leading to direct losses uh, for shareholders, corporate governance become essential to address uh, such issues when market mechanisms and stakeholders activities alone are uh, uh, insufficient and in monitoring companies. Uh, various code of conduct and uh, recommendations such as the UK corporate governance and uh, uh, you know, uh, OCD uh, uh, code, OCD codes and ethics uh, serves our regulatory frameworks to ensure governance standards compliance with these codes is often voluntary, voluntary and, uh, but motivated by the fear of uh, reputational damage and uh, uh, risk of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, delisting from stock exchange due to uh, governance weaknesses, specific regulations uh, regarding directors, uh, incentives, and city codes on takeovers uh, further reinforce uh, governance uh, practices. So uh, that's it. Here are some, uh, you know, uh, 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 for further reading some uh, uh, books, websites, and uh, materials you can visit. Uh, okay. Some uh, websites for your references. So uh, if you have any questions, concerns, and issues, you can drop me an email at yasir at ukversity.co.uk. Uh, uh, 
and thank you very much nelson for today the lesson okay uh, any questions any concerns any any issues you can drop me no, a no. okay and you uh, you can also ask now so that's it for today and uh, uh, our next lecture is tomorrow uh, uh yes at 2 o'clock yeah tomorrow at 2 o'clock okay tomorrow is about assignment okay tomorrow is about assignment oh, sorry it's tomorrow is about doing the assignment isn't it no no is our second session assignment is a lost okay. session okay so okay. Thank, all right yeah. Thank you very much, uh, 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 Simon. And I'll see you tomorrow at 2 o'clock. And have a good uh, evening and good weekend, OK? Thank no you. No problem. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah, bye. bye, -bye.